everybody. So first off, congratulations is in order. You have finally made it to your last semester as a Guilford College Education Studies student. So pat yourself on the back because I'm sure it has been a very long and stressful ride. And I'm happy to say that this last few months will go by very quickly and very well. You are finally to the point where you get to take everything that you've learned these last few years and work on them in the classroom and actually be the center of attention in the classroom, whereas before you kind of sit back and watch the teachers or your intern teacher do what they do and take notes and then you get a little taste of it maybe a couple days or so but this is you full-time teaching for many weeks that is one of the most inexplainable things that you ever will get to experience I can't even put it into words how wonderful it is um, but if you are anything like me, you are probably freaking out just a little bit. Um, but it's okay. That is normal. You will succeed. You have the best support system sitting right beside you in this classroom right now. Um, I hope that this video and PowerPoint will help you as much as I would like it to be able to. So I'm going to give you a few pointers and a few resources to use these next few months while you student teach and okay here we go so step one of this process is your advisor or professor is going to give you your CT or cooperating teacher and location as to where you're going to be student teaching this semester. They will tell you to contact that teacher as soon as you can and I suggest you follow that request. The earlier that you contact your CT, the more time you're going to have to get ready for August when school starts. As soon as you get a hold of them, not only do you get to get to get know your CT, you also get to learn the subjects that you're going to be teaching, as well as what days they plan on being at teacher work days or optional teacher work days at the beginning of the school year. You have to follow their schedule. So if they plan on being at the school that day, you have to be at the school that day. Um, the only time that you sadly do not get to follow their schedule is if they plan on being out sick that day, then you get to be the teacher while the sub sits back and relaxes and it's so much fun. Um, but however, my situation was a little bit different. I actually lived an hour and a half ish away from Guilford College. So I set up my student teaching with the school that I went to when I went to high school because I still had connections there and was unable to figure out who my CT was until I want to say it was July and I got a hold of her and I said hi my name's Kirsten Berger and I just would like to touch base with you and what subjects are you planning to teach and what are we doing this semester as well as just a little bit about me that I am an alumni at Northwood High School and what she's into and she emails me back and she says oh it's so nice to meet you I teach honor civics and AP US history at that point I think my heart dropped um, I am NOT a US history buff whatsoever I'm much more world history and even through my practices with David um, the previous semester or this current semester that you guys are in when I'd practice teaching I would make sure that I would pick a subject that I was not as comfortable with because I knew that the time was coming where I'm going to be stuck in a subject that I'm not completely comfortable with and be lost so 
the earlier that you can find out what it is that you're reteaching, the more time you're going to have to reteach yourself these subjects because since I am a CTE student or a non-traditional student, aka I'm old, um, it's been a very long time, close to over 10 years since I've taken civics. So all of that information has just gone out of my head and luckily my CT was gracious enough to sit down and reteach me some of the things that she would be teaching as well as some of the things that I would be teaching. So I was very grateful and very lucky in that situation. But if you have the chance to do that, you need to take that chance and contact your CT as early as possible. And you are going to be very much ahead of the game. And trust me, your CT will appreciate you if you're on top of things and ahead of everything and ready to go when he or she is ready to go. So that is step number one for your process to head into student teaching. So step two for your last semester at Guilford College is to jump right in and be a part of the team. We are lucky enough to start our student teaching at the beginning of the school year rather than in the middle. Most schools do internship in the fall and student teaching in the spring where we are opposite. We do our internships the spring before and our student teaching in the fall. We get to come in and see the teachers set up their classrooms, get their class lists, as well as go through beginning of the year staff meetings and professional development. I was lucky enough to, as I mentioned before, go to my alma mater and student teach with teachers that taught me. So it was kind of neat to see the behind the scenes and how they all all acted outside of the classroom and on a professional level. Um, so by jumping right in and participating in those meetings with your teachers, you kind of get to know other teachers outside of your CT as well as outside of your department. So you get to meet um, foreign language teachers and English teachers and history teachers and math teachers and art teachers and CT teachers. It's just an amazing experience to learn from so many of them because they are professionals and they've been doing this for a long time. So you get to ask them questions how their classroom works and what works best for them that may work best for you and you've never thought about adding that little bit of detail into your teaching before. Um, another great reason that helps us start in the fall at the beginning of the school year is you and your CT kind of get the chance to sit down and make your classroom environment, the two of you, rather than jumping in in the middle of the year where if you're on a traditional schedule, these students have had the same teacher already for six months, whereas or not six months, but four. Whereas starting off in the beginning of the school year or with a block schedule, new teacher, new students, it's okay. Um, but we have a schedule where we kind of phase in to full-time teaching and then phase out. And my CT had mentioned that she did not make a plan with one of her student teachers the previous times that she's been a CT. And that was one of the biggest mistakes because once her student teacher phased back out of student teaching, it was hard to get her classroom back in order the way that she wanted it to and for them to be used to her again. Um, so we went right on from the beginning, let's co-teach. I want these students to know you and know our expectations from the get-go so that by the time I phased out and left, they were used to hearing a mixture of both of us teaching in the classroom at the same time. 
Um, I believe that one of my biggest confusions and worries was that once I started full-time student teaching that the CT wasn't allowed to help whatsoever. And I was wrong. It is okay for them to help you. That's what you're there for. This is your chance to get the help that you need while you're teaching just so that it helps you kind of be prepared once you get your own classroom. So use that to your full advantage by jumping right on in and being a part of the team because you're going to see things that you've never seen before um, from a teacher point of view rather than a student's point of view. And it will help you because by the time you do get your own job and you know they start asking for you for your evaluations and filling out all of your paperwork, you're going to be like, oh yeah, I've seen this before. This is no problem. Thanks to the fact that we get to start school at the very beginning of the year, just right along with everybody else. So step three, or my little third piece of advice for you is to be sure that you have some sort of support system or just time set aside for yourself during this process. We are now full-time in student teaching, no other classes to worry about, no work to worry about other than focusing mainly on your student teaching process and how your lessons are going to be. Um, everybody's experiences are going to be the same and throughout this semester you're going to have visitors come into class and tell you their experiences about student teaching and especially from Guilford so you're going to see previous Guilford grads and they're going to tell you what it's like not everybody's experiences is going to be awesome they're going to tell you that they've had a tough time that their CT was not very personable and that they were kind of limited on what that is that they could do. Um, they were strictly supposed to follow the teacher's lesson plans and that was it. And sometimes that happens and, and that's okay. Where you pull those amazing experiences from is taking what they give you and putting them in your back pocket and knowing that this is a way that you can do things, whether they work or they don't work. Um, but I've coined... Tuesdays, breakdown Tuesdays during my student teaching process. Um, if any of you have David as your teachers, you will, show, I'm sure, hear about my lovely breaking down. Um, but it was okay because I looked forward to Tuesdays because that was the day that we had class. So if I was breaking down on Tuesdays, I knew that I was going to class to see David and to see my other two um peers, um, classmates. So I would get to vent to them and hear them say that it's okay, that what I'm going through is normal, that I know what I'm doing. It's fine. You're just cry. You'll be okay. Um, so it was nice. It was nice to have those Tuesdays where even though all day in class, it was just a complete failure. Um, but once I got to Greensboro that afternoon that I would get to kind of get some support back. And I don't think we've, I've realized how lucky I am until after all of this was over with. And I don't get to see my classmates every day anymore. And I don't get to see them at least once a week. But I made wonderful connections with my other classmates that will carry on forever. Um... I'm so grateful for them and David, so cannot complain. So use use that support system that you have in the classroom. Also use your support system at home. If you're married or you have a boyfriend or you have a wonderful family there to back you up, use them, call them, call your friends and just say, hey, you may not understand this, but I need you to listen to me for about two seconds about this child that was just blatantly disrespectful to me and I had no idea what, how to handle it. And just let them... Let them listen. They'll listen. They want to help you through this just as much as you want to get through this. So use them. Also, set aside time for you. Find something that you enjoy doing either on a weekend or after school one day to where you go out and you let all of that frustration out and refresh. Um, mine was 
coaching, even though I wasn't full-time coaching because that was not allowed. Um, I was able to come in and go to practices and go to games and see them. And that made me feel so much better to be around my kids that I've been around for years. Um, that was my downtime. That was my time for me to kind of just forget about everything else that's going on from your electronical evidences to your videotaping your classroom to dealing with the child that blatantly disrespected you and you have no idea what to do with them. So, um, I very much enjoyed seeing my athletes and my children and just being like, hey, let's spike a few volleyballs in the ground and let's get through this and, you know, let me cheer you guys on while you're at a game and yell at you when you do bad things because it just feels good to get that out and not have to worry about student teaching in school. So make sure you set that time aside. I mean, anything can help as long as it's taking your focus off of student teaching and off of all of the stress that you're going to feel these next couple of months. It's worth it. Don't drive yourself crazy and find something to do off on the side. So that is my third little piece of advice to you. Now moving on to the fourth. So step four for this lovely semester that you're about to partake in is fake it till you make it. I walked into this assuming that teachers knew everything and even growing up I was like you know what these teachers know everything they have they know all the answers to my questions it's amazing and then as I'm going through this process and reteaching myself a lot of information that it's been years since I've ever looked at um, I realized that I have no idea about a lot of these subjects and curriculum and I thought that I was a complete and utter failure I was like I did this is not the profession for me I don't know and it took me until probably December to realize that it's okay to tell the child I have no idea um, and that was really where a lot of my breakdown Tuesdays came from was the fact that I could not accept the answer I don't know and once I have, and trust me, I have, I tell my students all the time when they ask me questions, I don't know, I just work here. Um, <laughs> no, but I think that once you realize that it's okay if you don't know the answer to a question or that maybe you're partaking in a lesson that you really have no true idea, you know the basics, but you can't go really in depth with it. Um... I think that it's okay to tell them that you don't know and you can kind of push some of that on to them and say you know what that's a really good question how about tonight you look up the answer and come back with it to tomorrow and tell all of the class so that we can kind of sit down and talk about it together and that also gives you time to do the same thing so that when they come back the next day and go okay did any of you find the answer about whatever it was that you talked about the day before Kids can raise their hands, and then you can open a discussion about that, and I think that not only will it help them kind of take responsibility on for finding out their own information, it'll also help you realize that it's okay to say, I don't know, and kind of put it on the kids, um, and give you time to figure it out for yourself, because they're going to throw some crazy questions at you in the middle of your lessons, and you're just going to kind of be like, um... Sure, I have no idea, but usually I would just go, um, help, <laughs> and point back to my CT, and she would just be like, oh yeah, no, it's this. So, the biggest thing is the more that you teach and the longer that you're in this career, the more easily that it'll flow out, and while you're doing those lessons and talking, you'll accumulate those really cool stories that your teachers had, and you'll make your own and you'll get used to in the middle of a lecture throwing out a really neat story that the kids will remember for years and years on down the, down the road. Um, it doesn't happen right now and I think that was one of the biggest things that I had to overcome is realize that I'm not I'm not there yet. 
I don't have that experience that all of my other teachers had. So that is the biggest piece of advice. Um, and I want to say that another reason that one of that was one of the biggest fears for me is to say, I don't know, is because kids are mean and kids are vicious and they can smell fear from a mile away and they come in and they're just like, ooh, fresh meat. What can we do to this teacher today? Um, and not all children are like that, but I'm not saying that if you have a block schedule, you'll have three classes or traditionally you'll have six. I'm not saying that one of those classes is not going to have a child inside of it that's going to just rip you to shreds. Um, they won't all, but there is going to be some. Um, mine was my fourth period uh, during student teaching and it was a senior class that had no interest in being there whatsoever and it was the last period of the day and they're just ready to graduate and here's this new woman that's in this classroom trying to teach me and they thought it was hilarious but I also had two CTs so the CT for this class was kind of laid back and very different from the teacher that did the, the honor civics with me and she was just like oh you'll be fine she's like just jump in front of them and if you have any questions just ask me and you know don't worry about it don't worry about it and I'm like okay well then I don't worry about it and then I've got kids just looking at me like what are you talking about why are you talking to me um but again I used my support system to help me get through that process and realize what was best for me and what was best for them and our time together and how my lessons would be, would be for them. And towards the end, I really got to know what it was that fit best for them. Um, they needed a little bit more guidance than my honors classes did. And it was good practice for me just because with honors students, majority of the time they take on a lot of the responsibility whereas my senior class did not they did not want to do any homework they didn't want to do anything they just were like, let me get in here and get out of here and graduate I don't care um so by making sure that a lot of their class time was we did a little bit of notes and you were doing some reading and you were